is fuel for your body, your mind, and definitely your sport. But let's face it, nutrition is confusing and the expectations on girls and women to be thin and have a six pack are exhausting. If you've ever been frustrated with your body, confused about nutrition, obsessed with eating healthy or guilty when you don't, under ate, over ate, or overtrained, and overwhelmed with all the pressure, then this podcast is for you. Nutrition can be easy, you can take control of it, but it might start with letting go of control by asking for help and making a change. I'm Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, sports dietitian and owner of Rise Up Nutrition, where I empower female athletes to overcome nutrition concerns and perform at their highest level, to stop being confused by all the mixed or harmful messages, and finally have confidence in your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. All right, fans, I'm super excited to have our second ever male guest finally on the Female Athlete Nutrition Podcast. We have Jonathan Levitt. He's the endurance team manager at Inside Tracker. He's the sales manager there. So he helps athletes navigate their journey towards optimal health and performance. Outside of the Inside Tracker company, he also is the host of his own podcast for the long run, which is all about running and he does lots of interviews with other athletes and professionals. And otherwise you can find him running himself, right? Road running, trail running, especially out in Boulder, Colorado, where he now lives. So Jonathan and I first connected just through Inside Tracker. They're a company that I've known of for more than five years now. I've used it in many of my clients, even past jobs I've had. I've used it myself personally. And so that's how Jonathan and I connected. And then of course we connect because we're both runners and both originally from Massachusetts. So we have that in common too. So Jonathan, super excited to to chat with you today. For sure. I'm looking forward to it. I love all the work you're doing. And uh, when we initially got connected by Trisha, she said, you got to meet Lindsay. You guys are going to hit it off. And so uh, a few years later, here we are. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was Trisha. I had worked with her at Inside Tracker back when I was working like military jobs. She was your your lead with military helping Inside Tracker work with military organizations. And so we'll get into like all that Inside Tracker does because I think that'll be really a cool focus of this conversation, but I kind of want to just start off by talking about you a little bit more, knowing a little bit about your background with sports and running when you first got into this sport? Because you're like, you do, you love the long distance. I'm in the long run. That's your podcast (laughs) name, right? (laughs) Yes. So I grew up hating running. Running was the punishment of all the sports that I participated in. I grew up playing baseball and hockey as one does here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And yeah, running was a punishment. It was, you know, you'd run to first base, second base, third base home, and then you'd, you know, run for fly balls. And that was about it. So fast forward to the 2013 Boston Marathon, and I'm living at home in Needham, and I went to Wellesley to watch at roughly the halfway point. And for whatever reason, I was being lazy on that day. My original plan was to go to the finish line, which I'm very glad I didn't do on that day. But I'm standing there in Wellesley watching all these different people running by, different shapes and sizes, And they're all running this marathon that they've worked so hard to do. And I was 22 at the time. Yeah, 22. So what are 22-year-old guys? Totally invincible. So I was like, (laughs) look, if all these people can do it, I'm pretty fit. I can do this too. So I was like, yeah, I'll run a marathon. And that that became my goal. And then the, the bombing happened and it really hit home. And the next day... I drove my car to Newton. I parked at the top of what I learned to be Heartbreak Hill. I didn't know that that's where it was at the time. And I was wearing all my blue and yellow, and I ran what I thought was the marathon course into Boston. So I get about six and a half miles in, and I'm at roughly the finish line or the turn before Hereford. And I can just vividly remember this like massive guy on a SWAT in, in the SWAT team with like a huge gun. He's like, you cannot be here. There's a citywide lockdown and manhunt. So I turn around and I ran back to my car. That was my first half marathon. Wow. It was also my, it was also my first stress fracture. Oh gosh. <laughs> so 
I, I, I got like 10 miles in and I was like, what if I ran a marathon today? Like, this is so cool. And then like a couple of miles later, I was like, I'm very tired. I'm very happy to be at my car and done. And why does my foot hurt so much? <laughs> so I sort of healed up from that, got myself a coach. I was like, this is awesome. Found a running community here in Boston and some friends who like to run and run fast and work out hard and whatnot. And that was 2013, summer of, of wow. 2013. I had just moved into Boston and I'd say the rest is history, but a lot has changed since then. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. But you know, you're not the first person who's like, when you get, when you get that bug to start running distance and then you're like in your first run, I actually, my best friend in college did that. She signed up for a half marathon, having never done one before. I think her furthest was like maybe six miles. So on the day that she ran her furthest ever half marathon, it was one of those races that was like one lap around was the half. And then you could also do two laps for the full. And she she crossed her half marathon finish line and then she just kept going. And <laughs> so the same day that she ran her first half marathon, she ran a full marathon. It also didn't end well for her. I think she had an injury soon after that too. But it's like, you get this like, oh my gosh, I can do it. Like I can. And it's such, it's, it's just so such empowering. It's so empowering. Yeah. 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 So that's hilarious that the very next well, day you ran your furthest ever half marathon and then you know, that was your inspiration. What, what a year to the 2013 marathon. I also just like, was that your first marathon watching or had you watched the Boston marathon before? It was definitely one of the first times I had watched it because I grew up, I don't know, 10 miles from there. So I, I'm sure that at some point I watched the marathon as a kid or in high school, we, we always had Patriots day off being here in new England, of course, that you know, third Monday of of April. It's a real holiday. It is a real holiday, but I I can't remember any like specific memories of of spectating the marathon. And then in college, I was out at UMass, and I would never come back unless I had to, in terms of leaving UMass. So I totally forgot we have that in common too. That we both went to UMass. We didn't know each other at the time, though. Right, small <laughs> world. But yeah, I, I don't have any specific memories of of watching the marathon before that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just say that because I think all marathons, like as a spectator, I love being a spectator. I think that they are, it's just so exciting to see, watch people and what they go through. But then I will say, and I don't know if this is just because I'm from Massachusetts, but there's something even more special about Boston. Yeah. This is a fact, not an opinion. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> just making sure like this is a fact. There's gosh, just as a spectator watching Boston is so incredible. And so I've never run Boston, the Boston marathon, but I've been a spectator at it many times as my dad has. And it's just like every, you, you get that bug. It, it you want to do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm getting the chills now. I mean, I've run it twice and it's like a crescendo, right? You start out further west. And first of all, like the, the ride out there is like 45 minutes in a bus. And then you're like on the high, on, on the mass pike. So you're going, you know, 65 miles an hour for 45 minutes. And you're like, wait a minute, I'm gonna I got to run this back. So it, it feels like you're going out to Amherst and then, you know, you start in Hopkinton. It's super, you know, calm compared to the rest of the city. But as you get closer and closer to the city, it gets louder and louder and louder and people are drunker and drunker and drunker. And the the There's progression is, yeah, the progression is just wild and it's, it's so special. I'm running this fall and I can't wait. Yeah. So it, it is back in person, but it's just different because it's in the fall. Do you think, are they going to go back to the spring? Yeah, they'll go back to next, okay. next April. Yeah. Okay. So they're just trying to fit in one more since they had to do the virtual. Cause I was like, well, if they're doing it this fall, are they still going to do it in April? So I'm glad they are just to get back to normal routine. Well, that's super exciting for you to, to be planning for that. But, but you've gone further. Like you said, a lot has happened since then. Cause now you, you love doing ultras. I've done a handful of ultras. The longest I've ever done was rim to rim to rim in the Grand Canyon, which was just under 13 hours. And that was about 42 to 45 miles. My watch said 42. My friend said 45. And, go with the 45. Yeah, we'll go with the 45. 13 hours. And I had also done a 50K. And what was wild about the canyon was, so the 50K was in Tahoe and it took me seven hours and seven minutes. It took me 
seven hours and 20 minutes to run from the south side of the Grand Canyon to the north side of the Grand Canyon, which was 22-ish miles. And then I did it again on the way, like had to run it back. So I get halfway to through this run and it's already my longest time on feet. So to turn around and look at like you're literally staring into the unknown. You can see the other rim from the north rim because it's higher. And it's like, I don't know what's about to happen. Like this is going to get weird. And it it did. But it's like it's that feeling of this unknown. And I, I post about it on, on Instagram today i was like and and reflecting on the feeling of what it's like to just do something that you don't know if you can do i didn't know if i was going to be able to physically run 45 miles but the alternative was a ten thousand dollar helicopter ride and i wasn't going (laughs) to do that so so my body is going to figure out a way right exactly so it's like you better figure this out otherwise you're screwed (laughs) Yeah, I can't. I really actually can't relate to that. I I can't say that I've done anything like that before. Of like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I did um, one of my hardest cha- like races recently. It was in the past two years. Was I did this seventeen? It was called Imogene Pass in Colorado. Actually, are you familiar with it? Yeah, Imogene Pass run. So I did that one and. It, it's just a 17 miles, but you, you summit a mountain. So I think it's, you travel up 5,000 feet, you go 10 miles up 5,000 feet up to, I think somewhere around 13,000 or something. And then seven miles down, I never doubted that I was going to make it, but I'm not trained in the altitude. Like I'm here in San Antonio, Texas, it's flat. And I just went up there for the weekend, not trained for the altitude, did not even run extra hills to prepare or anything. And I don't do good in altitude. So like right away, I was like, it really can't breathe. Never mind, run. (laughs) But I still didn't think I wasn't going to like finish. I didn't have that fear. Like I still had confidence that I would finish. It was just like, I'm going to walk and it's going to take me a lot of time. But I, but I knew like I would finish. So I really can't relate to that feeling of, of like, that experience of yours. It's, it's unique. I I think what I'm hearing from you too, is that's probably one of your draws to this distance running and ultras is that unique feeling. Yeah. I think that like, that's part of the reason why I love it. Right. It's like, what happens when you're totally spent? Like what happens when you don't think you have anything left in the tank and you don't have a choice, but to keep going. And so I, I like, I remember hitting the 50K mark and at the 50K, if you start at the South Rim, you're coming downhill and it's a very gentle downhill. You don't really feel it, but you feel it going the other way. And so I'm running like 715 pace down, slightly downhill. It's like a th- minus 3% maybe. And I'm like, I'm on top of the world. This is fantastic. I feel amazing. I said to my buddy, I'm like, We've got happy legs. We're going to use them and we're going to pay for it. I guarantee it. And we did. So an hour later, I took a video at the 50K and I sent it to my coach, David Roche, who would be another good one to have on this podcast. Okay. And or his wife, Megan. She's a she's a physician and elite runner herself. Oh, write um, them down. Yes. And I, I took this video because I was like, this is the best I've ever felt. I, I was on such a high and feeling so strong. And I was like, this is not going to last. And I need to remember this. And 10 miles later was the absolute worst I've ever felt. So the climb out of the canyon is uh, basically a 10K with 5,000 feet of gain. (laughs) And it took me three hours, three and a half hours to, to get out. And so I've been running for... 10 hours at this point and it got to a point where like I couldn't eat anymore. I didn't want to eat anymore. And knowing, I know I'm like, that's not an option. I, I must keep eating and being, having like three miles to go moving at a 30 minute mile pace uphill. It was like what I said to myself on the video that I still have, I was like, there's nothing to do but move forward. You just keep moving forward. That's it. And everything in me wanted to sit down and just 
like wait until I could feel better. Sun was going down. Everybody else was still moving. I was like, I just want to sit. And I saw donkey crap on the on the trail. And I was like, I, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> or mule, mule poop. I was like, that's how I feel. I took a photo of it. This is how I feel right now. Like mule poop. Uh-huh. And you just keep going. And it like what I love about that is it's like such a carryover into life, right? Whatever you're doing, the only way to get through it is just keep going. And incredibly long tangent, but yes, that's why I love it. <laughs> Oh, you're like a storyteller. It's awesome to listen to. And and I think that's actually one of my favorite things about running too is like how much it translates into life. The lessons you learn through not just the races, but the training, it's like it translates in, into life and just keep moving forward. Right? I love it. Yeah. I did, a, I did an interview with someone about running Boston this year and she was like, have you, do you have any lessons that have carried over from running into life? I said, yes, all of them. Yeah. All my life lessons. <laughs> it's literally all one. of them. <laughs> yeah. That was the perfect answer. <laughs> I'm interested in, you know, obviously, so you work for this company inside tracker, which we'll talk about really, really soon, but how, like how has working for that company, which is a health and, you know, blood biomarkers and they deal with nutrition, you have dietitians on your team. Like how has that shaped you as a runner and doing things, you know, like, like marathons and ultras and has that been super helpful to you? Yeah. I love this question. And I'm so privileged to, to be able to learn from, we have seven dietitians on our team and I'm very close with a handful of them and I've learned so much from them. And when I first started at Inside Tracker, I was experimenting, like before starting at Inside Tracker, I was experimenting with keto and low carb and paleo and like all these trendy, buzzworthy diets that you read about on Instagram that worked for somebody. And none of them worked for me. I ch- felt like trash all the time. And I kept getting bone injuries. Go figure. <laughs> and I, so I started doing blood work and working with our sports dietitians. And they were like, you need to eat more. I was like, what do you mean I need to eat more? I thought, I thought you need to eat less. And she was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so she, she had me eat 500 calories a day more, just like baseline. And I, I post frequently these days about like eating pizza and bread and bagels and all these things, like these foods I used to avoid. And so I listened to you on, I'll have another with, with Lindsay Hine and you talked about intuitive eating and I hadn't like conceptually thought of like the way I eat until you explained it in the way that you explain intuitive eating. And I'm like, this is exactly how I eat, right? I know what my body needs. I know how to fuel for performance because I have blood work that tells me what to do and I fill in the rest with whatever the hell I want. So like I've eaten pizza every week. Every once a day, at least, maybe twice a day, every week this entire year, I eat bagels, ice cream, all these things that like make me happy and satisfied. And my coach calls them fun foods. And my blood work is the best it's ever been in Isn't seven that years. Crazy. Isn't it's that crazy? Isn't that just crazy? <laughs> so, so I know what my body needs. I know the micronutrients that I need to get through supplements. I know the micronutrients that I'm able to get through food. And I know the the types of foods that I need to eat regularly. So for me, that's oatmeal every day, fish twice a week, more carbs, more fat, more protein. So more, more, more. Yeah, that was the key word for you, more food. <laughs> yeah. And a very targeted list of supplements. And I spent two months at 10,000 feet and... What, I, what my takeaway was from living at 10,000 feet for two months is that you can't skip the basics, right? Eat, sleep, move. Eat, sleep, hydrate were my three like pillars because at sea level, if you don't do any of those things, it doesn't really impact you in the short term. Maybe it does in the long term, but there's no instant feedback loop of, oh, you didn't sleep eight hours. You feel like trash. Maybe that's the one that you do. But, oh, you don't eat enough. You don't feel good right away. You don't not feel good right away. Oh, you didn't hydrate enough today. You don't not feel good right away. 
Now, go up 10,000 feet. If you don't do any of those things consistently, you feel awful all the time. <laughs> yeah, right and right away and all the time. Right, mm-hmm. right away and all the time. So, so the feedback loop is instant in that it doesn't matter all these recovery tools that you have or the the watch that you have or the blah blah blah, the high you know, tech devices that we all have. If you don't nail the basics, you will feel like crap. So for me, it just reaffirmed everything that I know about fueling and nutrition and this and that. Like, do the common uncommonly well is a line from Ben Bergeron, who's a world-renowned strength coach. And being at 10,000 feet reaffirmed this. And again, I did the common consistently. I slept enough. I ate enough. I drank enough. And the blood work was better than it's ever been. And my performance is better than it's ever been. And my diet is looser than it's ever been. And I think the three of those things are very intertwined. And I, and most importantly, I feel better than ever before. I don't look at food and like have an issue with eating pizza or a bagel or a second bagel or whatever because of this feedback loop. And again, I have, I have our team to thank for like, educating me on the things that are important and the things that are like dumpster fires of of information on the internet like so many of us fall victim to myself included in the past mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah it's so great and i just love how you shared that you know because i think we've all been there at some point in time of falling victim to the keto or the low carb or just whatever trend it is intermittent fasting like because it worked for somebody and and this is beyond true for athletes that's like oof we got to find a different way whether it is you know I, I talk about this intuitive eating you didn't even know it was intuitive eating but you were doing it right <laughs> um, or just fueling more loosening up those restrictions around food but even i think for for non athletes which is actually where intuitive eating started it wasn't for athletes at all i think i'm I'm one of those sports dietitians that's kind of blending the two as much as I possibly can, which I think it is the best way to move forward with sports nutrition. But even for non-athletes, it's like actually, you know, finding the basics of what your body needs for health, because that is important, but then, you know, be going beyond that and and kind of what do I need for enjoyment? What do I need for fun? What do I need for feeling right? We're not robots. We're not robots. And if you go out to eat with friends, it's nice to be able to just like choose whatever. And I remember like, I, I'm not sure I would ever put a, put a title to my, to the, the feelings I had about food in 2013, 2014, maybe 2015, but it wasn't the best. And I was always reading menus before I would go places and I was always like, mm, can't go there. Oh, you know, it's not paleo. Oh, it's not, you know, there's too much, too many carbs. And it was like, it was exhausting. And, and that's even before you get to the restaurant that you enjoy food with friends at and all this stuff. And, but again, like until recently, I've never th- thought much about my attitudes towards food in 2014, 2015. I don't know where that came from, but it probably came from the internet. Like absolutely not from my parents and most likely 100% from people who, oh, this worked for me. Oh, you shouldn't eat this. Oh, you shouldn't eat that. And as you're talking about, like there is no bad food. There's a bad time for certain foods. Like you're not going to eat a donut before an 800 meter race. Nope. <laughs> but you could eat a donut in the middle of a hundred mile race. Uh huh. And so it's like, there's a, there's a time and a place for everything. And I wasn't there yet. And it's, it's wild. The, like the freedom that's involved with this intuitive eating that I now love. <laughs> <laughs> that you didn't even know you were doing, but now love. didn't even know I was doing. Yeah. And and to say too, like you didn't necessarily know that you had a bad relationship with food, if that's even what it was before. It it was just kind of you being, you know, a 20 year old surrounded by social media and what other people around you were doing. That's just like our culture. You know, that's what we call our diet culture. That's kind of surrounding us. And and so it is kind of, 
you do have to, you do have to intentionally step away from that. I feel like. And so for you, it it happened very nicely that you started working for a company that allowed you to step away from that. Yeah. I mean, so it was sort of like a, like I, yeah, I don't, I basically showed Ashley our, my results and she was like, you are not eating enough. And the rational brain, the rational side of my brain was like, great inputs, input of like, I have this information now. I need to do something differently. But the 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 emotional side was still like, are you sure? Like, how does that make sense? So I I totally can empathize with like where it all comes from and why it's so challenging to change that. I'm just very grateful that I received the information in that way and and made actions that allow me to like feel as good as I do now with this intuitive eating. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, and I, I want to go back to blending it with your blood biomarker results, because I think it is important, like you said, that, well, there's certain things that I do regularly. I have oatmeal regularly, but I'm sure you enjoy oatmeal, right? I didn't when I first started. Oh, you didn't. Interesting. Yeah. But now you do. But now I do. I mean, I figured out ways to to get it into my diet. Like I, again, like I've become very friendly with some of our dietitians. So like we go out to breakfast or we travel together or whatever. And so this spring or this winter, I was up in Breckenridge and one of them came to stay with us for the weekend. And she was like, she saw my breakfast and was like, wait, 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 wait. let me upgrade this for you. <laughs> so she's like, watch this and record this. And like we put it all over Instagram. And it was oatmeal with blueberries and peanut butter and hemp seeds, hemp hearts and cinnamon and chocolate, like dark chocolate. I was like, this is fantastic. Like, this is really good. And then Ashley, another diet. So that was Diana. Ashley, another dietitian was like, you can put you can put oats in a smoothie, like rolled oats go right into a smoothie. You can't taste it at all. So so. I went from like fighting it to, okay, this is a food that I, that I need to incorporate daily. I got to figure out how to get it in there. And now I enjoy it. Yeah. So, so learning how to be more creative with your foods, right? It doesn't just have to be this packet of oatmeal or like the traditional, like when I grew up, I watched my daddy oatmeal and it was just oatmeal raisins and brown right. sugar and, and like, like a hot pot. Yeah. 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 And that does like, and, and actually there, I have a special place in my heart for that now. Cause I'm kind of like, Oh, childhood bowl of oatmeal. But like, that's not how I'm going to fuel myself every morning. I'm going to, yeah, load it up. Make, yeah. So you just had to be more creative and finding ways to eat these foods that, you know, okay, this is good for my health based on my bl- blood biomarkers, but I don't just have to force myself to eat this mushy pot of oatmeal. I can have more fun with it, make it more tasty. And then shout out to Picky Bars because they make it even easier because you can just travel with it. And then wherever you go, you have this like consistency with what you're eating for breakfast. So it's race morning. Oh, I don't want anything new. Here's something that I've had hundreds and hundreds of times. I'm just going to put some almond milk in there, put it in the microwave and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. And now another thing that I like about Inside Tracker as as a user of it is, so let's just say that you're you know, your blood work shows that you could do better with more fiber in your diet. And so inside tracker is going to recommend oatmeal to you, but they're also going to recommend other things. They're also going to recommend, you know, brands. So you can do brand flakes or brand muffins. They're also going to recommend chia seeds and flax seeds. They're also going to, you know, they're going to give you other options. So if you still are like an oatmeal hater, like there's more options. And again, you have dietitians on your team that can help your clients kind of sort through this and figure this out. So I was wondering if we could tap into that. Could you just give us like a high level overview of what Inside Tracker is for our listeners? What exactly is the product, the service? So the product or the service is personalized insights into what to do to to improve. So our whole basis of existence as a company is how do we help people live longer, better, healthier lives through a personalized approach? So functionally, the way it works is we take inputs run them against science and our algorithms and provide outputs of do this. So blood, DNA, wearable insights. 
So we do a comprehensive blood test. We look at we look at nutrient hormone levels and and provide guidance within the context of the individual's needs, right? So when you're working with special ops, they're not average people, and they're not they're not interested in being normal, right? They're looking to maximize readiness so that they can be alert in the field and not die. As athletes, we're not necessarily looking to not die on a daily basis, but we're looking to feel better and have more energy and recover faster and not get injured. Blood biomarkers can explain either why why that's happening or why that's not happening. So we're we're here to say, oh, if your goal is you want to improve sleep or reduce injury risk or blah, 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 do these three to five things with this frequency for the next six months. So it's not trendy. It's not sexy. It's not, it's not buzzworthy. Again, do the common uncommonly well. Eat oatmeal every day for six months. It'll drop your glucose and cholesterol. You know, eat fish twice a week. Take a garlic supplement. All these things that are like, they're boring, but they're the fundamentals. But it works. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. And yeah. so that's the idea. It's, it's how do you make decisions tailored to you based on you. So your demographics, your activity level, your goals, your food preferences, the fact that you don't eat this, you do eat that, blah, blah, blah. All of that is is combined to give you essentially a recipe, pun obviously intended, of what what to do differently with all this information. And so now we've added wearables. So you can link your Garmin and and get insights on sleep. And so we can say, Oh, your sleep quality has been poor lately. By the way, your magnesium and vitamin D are low. You should fix that, basically. Here's how. And then let's measure progress. Or you were very active last night before bed, and that didn't have any impact. Great. Continue exercising in the evening. Or the alternative, some of us don't respond well to activity in the evening, like myself. And so we can say your sleep quality was worse than normal. You should consider not working out in the evening. What's the you know cost benefit of that? So long story short, or longer story short, <laughs> as very long-winded, it's essentially personalized insights into how to be the best version of yourself for as long as you possibly can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love it. You know, I've I've used it myself. I do use it on some of my clients pending, you know, exactly what they need. But I think one of the things that I like about this, and of course you have dietitians, you know, on your team, but the thing that I kind of like about Inside Tracker is how anybody can do it. You know, you can go online right now, you can order it, you can, you don't technically, you know, you don't need to make a doctor's appointment. You just order it, you show up at the lab, and then you get your results with those clear actionable steps almost to the point where you don't necessarily, you don't need a dietitian to explain everything because it's all explained for you, right? The platform like tells you, kind of pieces this together for you of just the example you were saying, like, oh, you exercise at night and your magnesium is low and your vitamin D is low. So these are your three actionable steps. And it, it gives, it's such direct feedback. And of course, the reason you do have dietitians on your team, the reason I still provide this for my clients is sometimes, you know, just that further step, further explanation or whatever, how apply but it. Yeah. How, you know, and the accountability and follow through, but it really is so user-friendly for anybody to get those clear, actionable steps that are personalized. Absolutely. That's the goal. Yeah. So, so I highly recommend it <laughs> and I've used it myself too. The biggest thing for me is honestly like always checking up on my iron. That's something that I just always, ha- I I just, ha- because like you said, you have to, there's certain things that you have to do the, the common uncommonly well. And it's like, even though as a dietitian, I have this great diet and all that, my iron will still drop. And it's like, ugh, yeah, because I'm not being consistent with my iron supplement or because, you know, I haven't you know, if I, if I am eating intuitively, then I haven't been getting that extra spinach or whatever. And so there's, it's, that's where using inside tracker to kind of help you and figure out what are those things that I need to do. And I guardrails guardrails. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. 
and actually, so that's my personal story with my iron specifically. It's been much more consistent because like my pantry is always stocked with those really uncommon high iron foods, like cream of rice, like pumpkin seeds, like cashews, like dried apricots. Octopus. <laughs> yeah, like the, the <laughs> uh, blackstrap of- and the molasses. <laughs> I just have like, I do straight up spoonfuls of molasses now. Nice. Like, like the pantry is always stocked with that. And that was something that I really didn't do until it was like, why is my iron always low? Come on. Like, okay, these are the things I need to do. I have these in my house all the time. And I can still eat intuitively. I can turn that those molasses into molasses cookies if I want to, you know? Tef. <laughs> Teff cookies are are uh, pretty popular as well. I will have to try those maybe next weekend. <laughs> and I think the other thing that I like about Inside Tracker that you were kind of getting at is, you know, we're not just looking at is your blood work, are you deficient in something, but more so, you know, are you optimized for what you're trying to do? Yeah, and- so we we believe that that good health is not the presence of the the absence of disease, but rather the striving for improvement, right? You go to your physician, they're looking to make sure you're not sick today. That's important. That's a very critical piece in in this health ecosystem. But they're not trained in nutrition. They get, what, four hours of, of nutrition schooling in their entire 10-year career, 10-year medical journey. That's That's not much. And so it's not really their swim lane. Yet when somebody is struggling with weight or with how they feel, what's the conventionally the first place that they turn? Their physician. So the the incentive structure or the alignment needs to change because the people who are being asked this information are not equipped to answer these problems or answer these questions. And so What we're trying to do is now more than ever, like nobody is more in control of your health than yourself. And what we saw in 2020 is that if you don't take care of yourself, nobody's going to, right? So the government's not going to do it. Your employer's not going to do it unless you work for Inside Tracker. (laughs) Um, And we need to be proactive. And it's not enough to just go to the physician and say, oh, you're healthy. Come back next year. Well, what happens two days later if something were to be elevated or or high or low or whatever? The story I tell all the time, and this one's – I'll try and keep it brief. But So my dad was my first – so I'm in sales at Inside Tracker. My dad was my first customer. He's been testing quarterly since 2014. So he has 30-plus rounds of, of – blood data on himself so he knows his numbers and he knows where he's supposed to be so last summer his liver enzymes and creatine kinase started to elevate with no change in activity and no change in diet and we couldn't figure out what it was and his cholesterol skyrocketed again no change in diet so he meets with our dietitian and she says you should speak with your doctor about this as does our like system flag and he doesn't do it because that's what men do. And <laughs> two months later, his numbers – or three months later, he does another test. His numbers are higher. He meets with our dietitians again. What does Ashley tell him to do? Go see the Lee, You really need to speak to your physician. And I asked him. I was like, hey, how would your consult with Ashley go? Blah, blah, blah. He was like, well, she told me to go speak with my doctor. I was like, well, did you? She's pretty smart. You should listen to her. And so he sent his doctor the data and the doctor said, you need to go to the hospital right now. Oh, geez. And he said it was four o'clock on a Monday or Tuesday or whatever. And he was like, can I go tomorrow? And she goes, what don't you understand about go to the hospital right now? Right now. He goes to the hospital, spends a week in the hospital as they monitor his liver labs and in one of the meetings with the doctor, she calls me to ask for blood data. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a salesperson at a company and you are a physician <laughs> asking me for my father's blood data. <laughs> What's going on here? And yeah. it's a microcosm of the entire fucked up medical system. Sorry for swearing. And 
had he not been proactive about having these metrics, those numbers would have been like normal enough to not worry. He almost died. And Sheesh. and his his doctor basically said, because you caught this, you saved your life and definitely saved your liver. And a week later, he had a, a diagnosed autoimmune response in his liver that was caught by a very comprehensive blood test that would not have been caught any other way. And who knows how this conversation would have gone had he not had that. So again, our goal is not to prevent death from liver issues, but our goal is to put the power of your own health back into your own hands to say, I know my numbers. If something changes more than it should, I'm going to do something about it. And maybe if you're him, you'll wait till the next time it goes <laughs> higher. <laughs> but again, that's the point. The point is to put the power into your own hands so that you can make informed decisions about your health and eat more chocolate. I love that. <laughs> and, you know, I actually have a similar story of one of my very first clients that I used inside Tracker on. And this was, um, this was a military client because I used to work for the military and we had started to use inside Tracker, but then I left. And this, this client was just a bit frustrated with the military system, wasn't feeling good, wasn't getting the healthcare like results he thought he needed. So he calls me up, we start working on his nutrition together and then I had him do inside tracker and his blood work came back and things with his, his iron status, hemoglobin hematocrit, it actually flagged saying like, you need to go see a doctor. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is the first time I've seen this on the inside tracker, but you, you should go do that. It actually, again, cause he was a little frustrated with the medical system. It took him some time, but when he finally got in, he has a rare genetic disorder, he hemochromatosis. Yeah. Yep. And it's one of the worst cases that his doctors have ever seen, but it was like, it wasn't being picked up. His symptoms weren't kind of, kind of weren't being listened to until we did inside tracker. And so again, like you said, inside trackers goal is not to <laughs> find these extremely rare um, cases, but it is, I think it's when he took his, took things into his own hand, he, he took health into his own hands, he hired his own dietitian, did his own blood work, got the answers he needed to start his recovery journey, which gosh, if, if he waited another, cause he was already in, in bad health and bad shape. And if he waited another month, I don't even know what would have happened, you know? Yeah. It's wild. And it's like, again, this isn't intended to scare people, but it's intended to say you need to be in control of your own health. The number of times we've suggested that someone explore hemochromatosis, that it happened to an employee and he found out that it runs in his family and now he donates blood as often as he possibly can. And so, again, there are these combinations of things that can't exist in an otherwise healthy person that we will flag and say, speak with your physician. And normally, it's just borderline cholesterol or high glucose. Again, like that should be flagged, but it's not, it's not a medical concern but our system will flag it because it's outside of the normal range and a physician would address, you know, a, a glucose of 101, et cetera. But again, it's like nobody is running, nobody's physicians are running panels this comprehensive and they're, we're, we're in this insurance-based for-profit system that profits from sick people. It's not health care. It's sick care. Sick care. I know. And, and it's so backwards. And it's wild that a, a for-profit company, right? Like we have this great mission, but we're a for-profit company. It's wild that a for-profit company is the one that's providing these types of insights to the, the mainstream consumers or people who are looking to get better. Our our charged mission is to help every person on the planet improve their, their life and longevity through this personalized approach. And we won't be satisfied until we do that, right? We, we've been around for more than 12 years and we believe we have the largest database of healthy people that exists in the world. And so this allows us to do some cool stuff. And the more customers we have, the more powerful we can be from a personalization standpoint and the better we can get and the better it can be for each individual, right? So I can, I can say to a 
a male that the two strongest interventions for you are eat nuts daily and eat oatmeal once a day. Our data suggests that those are the two most effective and impactful recommendations because we can see what happens when we recommend that. We have baseline, we have follow-up, and we have the data in between. We can look at women. 50% of premenopausal women in our database have suboptimal iron levels. So again, these are people who are choosing to use our program and 50% of them have low levels of iron. So extrapolate that against the general population. Is it 60%? Is it 70%? Who knows? But that's to say, if you do Inside Tracker and you're a woman, statistically, there's a pretty good chance we're going to help you with your energy levels. And that's powerful to say. And it's powerful to know that that's the magnitude of potential impact. 35% of our database, low vitamin D. That's related to everything, right? If you improve your vitamin D, it's 10 cents a day and it impacts everything in your life. And all this research is coming out to say vitamin D is linked to sleep, mood, mental health, power, testosterone, recovery, like literally like fighting COVID. Who knows? Yeah. All of these. one of them. Right. All of these metrics are being measured by us and we have just wild data that's saying, look at how much of a problem these basic things are. And, and again, not a scare tactic. It's like, look at how much room you have to improve if this is what the data is suggesting in terms of this many people having a problem. 82% of Americans with compromised glucose levels. Like we could, we could drastically improve lifespan if we just got everyone to eat oatmeal every day. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that, and, and I think, yeah, I, I love what you said. Like this isn't to scare anybody. It's to, it's to say how much hope there is. And again, I want to, I want to overly stress as somebody who's used this many times as to how user friendly, like this whole system process and platform is, and to give you those options of how to improve your health. Like you don't just have one way, like like just to keep going on the oatmeal example, just for shits and giggles, like if you hate oatmeal, they're going to give you another way, right? Like, the, so the power is again in, in your hands and yeah, it's just amazing. Thank you for dropping all those statistics and numbers. Cause that was incredibly helpful. And, and I think that's ultimately like why this was so important to have you on is just to, to share that the power of of nutrition, of, but how simple it is. Like you said, like this, it, it can be so simple to feel better, but you have to be aware of what's wrong. And as you said on, in your podcast with Lindsay, the Lindsay and Lindsay podcast, yes. like nobody ever teaches us these things no, and, I know. and like, yeah, it should be done in school, but what about all those of us who have graduated? So we're trying to give people the tools to understand, okay, why should I care about this? And most importantly, what do I do about it? So you don't even have to care. You just like, we can tell you what, if you care enough to, to know that you need to do something differently, we can tell you what that differently looks like. I mean, I think that like a lot of people just don't know where to start. They're like, oh, I want to feel better. What does that mean? Oh, I'm going to try low carb. Oh, I'm going to try keto because that's what Google says. Yeah. But like, what if it started with this first? Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, mission success, if so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So speaking of, to learn more, if we've hyped up our listeners enough that they're really interested, where should they go to learn more? They go to InsideTracker.com. There's a chat on there and I'm often on the other side of it. So feel free to say hello. And yeah, we're online on Instagram. We have a blog. Most of our content creators are also dietitians with some training in nutrition communication. So like I said, we have almost 10% of our company is a registered dietitian or is currently in a dietetic program. So the people who are writing about nutrition or posting about nutrition, like they know what they're saying. And so we intend our, our social media presence to be informative and entertaining. So it's like telling stories about how nutrition has helped people and sharing some of those statistics that I shared there again not to not to try and scare but to say 
look at the upside, right? If you fall into this category like the majority of people do or like some wild percentage of people do, like how good can you feel? I'm going to continue on my soapbox here for a second. Please do. So a lot of people go th- seem to go through life tired and hungry all the time and they just think I'm getting older. This is how I have to feel or this like fatigue is a sign that you're working hard enough and that you're, you're, you're busy and this is a good thing. And we're here to say you don't have to feel that way. There's always an explanation for why you feel like crap. And pretty much all the time we can explain it through these metrics in our program. And if we can't, it's a sign of a bigger problem. And that's when your doctor steps in. But in 98% of the scenarios, if you feel like crap, we can validate that feeling. And it's like, so I get to work with customers and athletes and all this stuff. And as I'm sure you experience when people have these breakthroughs or like understand why they feel the way they do, it's wild to see the like the aha moment where it's like, wow, this is actually like there's an explanation for this. And it's almost always biochemical. It's not something you did wrong. It's not something that you're dumb or whatever. It's just like this is biochemistry. This is why it is the way it is. And here's a way out of it. So as you can tell, I'm very passionate about what I, I love what I it. Get to I'm, do. I'm like I'm just nodding my head in agreement with everything <laughs> you're saying. Just nod, 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 and and I I say that all the time. It's one of my most common sayings. Is like people don't know how bad they feel until you finally feel or how good. good they can feel. Yeah, or how good you don't even know. And even just last week. So in addition to all my female athletes that I'm helping all the time, I have a few side contracts. And so just last week I was doing like a fit to serve thing with the military. And it was kind of like a week long camp of nutrition, teaching, strength workout, teaching. And then like we ate meals with them. And by the end of the four days, I asked everybody, how are you feeling eating this food that we're providing you? You know, they still get to control their portions. They still have options, but just like Things like we had oatmeal. This might be yeah. the title of the podcast. Eat oatmeal. <laughs> we had this oatmeal for breakfast. This podcast is sponsored by the the Oatmeal Coalition oatmeal. of America. <laughs> Quaker Oats. <laughs> so we so we had oatmeal in the morning DM for collab. and <laughs> and we had you know salad and we had balanced plates for dinner and everything. And by the end of the week, everybody's like. I have more energy. I'm not crashing midday. Yeah, I'm sleeping yeah. better. I'm having Go more figure. regular bowel movements. It's like after four days, people feel better. And they're like, I didn't know I could feel this way. It's crazy. When people say, when when a 50-year-old woman says, I feel better today than I did when I was 25. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Because you're doing what your body needs. And it's it, like, so many of us are just, as, as we said, trained to think that this is just how it goes and you just feel like crap as you get older. It doesn't have to be that way. And for a lot of people, it's really empowering to know that like you can feel better as you get older if you do the right things. Mm-hmm. If Absolutely. you eat intuitively and <laughs> give your body what it needs. <laughs> yeah. If you if you get your blood work done with Inside Tracker and then eat intuitively. <laughs> <laughs> So, so speaking of, I'll do a little bit of self-promotion here. I do have a, a discount code. It's just all caps, Rise Up Nutrition for 10% off that you can use at Inside Tracker. It is that does still work, right? We'll amend that to 20% off and it'll be <gasps> even better. <laughs> 20% off. Awesome. So 20% off of Inside Tracker if you head to their website and use the code Rise Up Nutrition, all caps, all one word. And then I always say too, you know, Inside Tracker has their dietitians. If you need extra support, or feel free to reach out to me as well. And so we'll include all of that in the show notes. Jonathan, it was such a pleasure having you on hearing your personal story, your passion for the work that you do. And I also, you know, besides Inside Tracker, I do want people to know they can follow you as well, your podcast for the long run. And, you know, you have your own personal Instagram accounts that, like you said, I think if if, if you're a runner, you just like the messages that Jonathan's been talking about today, just go follow him. I'll include all that in the show notes. Okay. 
Awesome. Lindsay, thanks so much. And just a plug for you. I have a number of friends who have started working with you as a professional dietitian and their feedback is incredible. So if anybody is looking for that next step in how to feel and feel better, Lindsay comes with rave reviews. Thank you so much. That was unexpected. Thank you. (laughs) Of course. Well, fans, thanks for listening to another awesome episode. I had so, so much fun talking to Jonathan. So do not forget, if you want Inside Tracker, head to www.insidetracker.com and use the discount code, all caps, Rise Up Nutrition, and you will get 20% off of your order. There are a few different plans through Inside Tracker that you can look at. They're all wonderful. It's just based on exactly what you want measured but they're all great. And as mentioned, Inside Tracker is a great platform with blogs, resources, you know, they'll give you your individualized action plan. But if you're thinking, well, I would love, you know, that service, but I'm also looking for a personal dietitian for, you know, somebody to coach me through my personal needs to coach me through it. Or if you've been listening to my other episodes and you're feeling like, you know, I really resonate with this stuff about disordered eating, building my relationship with food, amenorrhea, having relative energy deficiency in sport, any of that, then I would say that's exactly what I'm here for, you know, to be your nutrition coach and to guide you through that. So you can always head to my website, www.riseupnutritionrun.com, where you can learn more and most importantly, see that link to just book a call with me book a call with me we can chat and see if or how i can help to include if that means nutrition coaching along with inside tracker that's always an option too i love the option of both (laughs) right it doesn't always have to be either or so inside tracker code rise up nutrition or head to my website book a call with me and see if or how i can help you thanks again for listening and i'll see you in the next show 